Okay, so this question, right, is uh, under, I will classify it under the maturation topic. Okay, it's actually not difficult, but I think some, uh, there are some students who leave totally blank or partial blank. So the first part is actually quite easy. First of all, uh, the glass is in the shape of a cone. So cone is a shape that you learn in tech two. So it shouldn't be too complex. So they gave you the dimension and you're asked to find the curved surface area of a cone. So if you see the shape that you're dealing with is cone, you might want to write out the, the formula first. So for the surface area part, uh, there are two parts to it. There will be the, the top, which is a circle, and also the curved surface part. Um, whether your surface area include the circle or not, that depends on whether it's a solid cone or not. So in this case, it's a cut. So the top part is actually not covered. So our surface area will not include the prior R square. So in this question, you, you need to visualize like an ice cream cone. So the question is asking for the curved surface area. So if I just use the formula, it's just a pi RL, which I think is quite easy to get unless you forgot what is the L. L is the slant height. It can be obtained by the Pythagoras theorem. So the radius and the height of the cone will be able to form a right angle triangle. So you do the Pythagoras theorem to get the slant height, and then you can perform the curved surface area, high RL. So write more decimal place before you gave the three effects. So in any case, if you need the curved surface area, use the one that is more DP in the subsequent part. So I will say part A is very simple. It, it's just a very simple three marks, so you shouldn't be leaving it blank. Part B, maybe some people have problem explaining it. So the approach is to use similar figure. So the water and the cup is actually in a form of similar cone. So if you look at this amount of water, this amount of water is in a cone and the original shape is also in a cone. So they are the similar shape that we are talking about. So in actual fact, we can be dealing with this formula. So we can be dealing with the volume ratio of similar figure. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Because um, this person claimed that the water is actually 75% of the cone. So I'm going to compare the volume of the water. So the person is trying to say that the volume of water is actually 75%. Okay, so I'm going to go by the similar ratio because the truth is the water and the cup is in simi uh, it's similar cone. So that's why I'm going to apply the volume ratio. So I apply the volume ratio according to the water height. So the height of the water is six and the height of the glass is eight. So I apply the ratio based on the height of the water and the height of the cone. So when I apply it, I actually get 27 over 64. So 27 over 64 is not 75%. So 75% will be three quarter. So it's actually not 75%. So if you want to, right, you can also do the conversion in percentage. So if you do the conversion in percentage, you will not get the 75%. Okay, so if you use the volume ratio, you'll find that it, the whatever the person claim is not correct. So that's why he is wrong. So the volume of the water is actually not 75% of the total capacity. Okay, so uh, the reason why he thinks so is because the height is actually 75%. Six over eight is actually 75%. The height of the water compared to the height of the cone is actually 75%. So the 75% is applied to the ratio of the height, but not on the volume, okay? So you can further explain that if you want to. 
and that will actually help you in the second part. So what is the percentage of the capacity of the glass that's filled? That means, right, okay, what is the volume of the water compared to the volume of the cone? So the, that means I can just use the volume ratio that I gotten here to calculate the percentage. So this can, if you are aware that it is actually similar ratio, this part can be done easily. The subsequent part is also not difficult, but some of you might not have the patience to read. So uh, basically, she, uh, Amir just poured the water into a second glass, which is in the form of a cylinder. So I draw out the cylinder first. And then the water fills up the cylinder to a height of 2.5. So it's easier if you draw to visualize. That means the same amount of water here. So the amount of water that is here, when it's being poured into the cylinder, it fills up a height of 2.5. So obviously the first thing that you should do is find out the amount of water here first. Common sense will tell you, if you don't even know the actual volume of the water, then how will you know how much is being topped over? So that will be, uh, I use one third pi r square. I use it on the, on the glass. I find out the amount of water by using one third pi r square. So I find out the volume of the glass but the water is 27 units. So I actually use the volume ratio to help me to find the amount of water. Um, anyway, this one is not the final answer here. So I choose to leave it in terms of pi. So the amount of water that I found, I choose to leave it in terms of pi. If you wish to press out pi, then use a lot of decimal places. So the volume of the cylinder should be the same. That means this amount of water. So what is the volume for cylinder? That is pi r square height. So obviously the height is the one that already been given. So you just follow through with the pi r square height equal to the volume of water. It's quite easy to get the radius. So this kind of pouring from shape to shape is quite okay if you have the formula on hand. So basically, it's just a transferring of formula. So it shouldn't be very difficult. You just need to read the question. So I wouldn't consider this a very difficult question. So is it because you never read the question enough, never think enough, 